So today uh, I want to talk about using the trio through Cubase and also using another little uh, gadget called the, the test cam uh, jointly together for different purposes just in case anyone's interested in that uh, it's worth mentioning where I first where I first came across the trio uh, people people might uh, be familiar with uh, that pedal show is that was TPS that pedal show which features uh, Mick and Dan and I was last year I was watching an old episode what the episode might have been already two or three years old by then where they look at um, five gadgets or things you can use to improve your playing uh, uh, for those who don't know uh, the, the, the pedal show as the name implies mainly focuses on uh, trying out different guitar pedals with combinations of uh, different guitars and amps and mainly is geared at just showing the, the different tones you can get uh, changing the signal path uh, between the pedals and stacking gain and all that sort of stuff but every now and then they have a show that goes a bit outside of that and that is a sort of a general sort of guitar playing type conversation and this was one of those times and so as it happens in the top five was uh, the trio uh, and the Tascam, which both of which do different things, um, but as I'm quickly discovering, can can be used together. Around the time I saw Mick and Dan talking about the trio, I'd also talk about the trio in in another YouTube on another YouTube channel, uh, the Anderton uh, YouTube channel, which is a uh, sort of a guitar shop in in the UK. And uh, Mick was on, I'm not sure why Mick was on there, maybe he occasionally does work with Anderton's. Oh, I think there's a, probably a link between the pedal show and Anderton's. Anyway, um, uh, uh, Mick was on that show with uh, the guy they called Danish Pete, uh, who, uh, who's uh, also, also quite a good guitar player. And he's into sort of looping and creating uh, you know, nice sounds on the looper and then playing over those. and. And they were both demonstrating the trio, so that, that's when I that's actually when I first saw the trio. But virtually the day after, by sheer coincidence, Mick and Dan then looked at it at the trio again on on their pedal show, uh, along with the test cam. Um, so the, the thing that struck me about the trio back then was the fact that uh, it is both a has a a band creator meaning uh, it can create uh, a bass and drum sort of rhythm section for whatever you're playing and it also has a looper function so you can uh, lay unlimited guitar tracks on top of the the uh, drum and bass uh, track you've just uh, uh, created um, but further than that and this is the thing that really uh, interested me was uh, the I discovered it had a a song parts function. It allows for you to create five song parts, i.e., you know, verse, chorus, intro, outro, uh, solo, bridge, whatever the case might be, five song parts that you can then meld into a sequence to create a complete song. Uh, so that that attracted me. I, I liked the idea of creating a whole song using this uh, song parts function um, and the thought occurred to me that uh, even at that time uh, I was often playing with other guitarists and, and we may not have had there, there may not have been any drums or bass uh, amongst whoever I was playing with and I thought well this would be a good way to provide the drums and bass and you know just play songs for fun basically that, that, that's that was the thinking and so, indeed, uh, I have uh, used it for that purpose. Uh, but once I started 
doing these uh, YouTube clips, um, it immediately, well, you know, it occurred to me straight away that the sound quality of the Digitech going through my bass, my little bass, my Ampeg bass amp, um, into a video mic, this one right there, video mic, I'm just, let me check that it's on, it is, uh, the, the sound quality wasn't great, the, the bass bit sounded okay through the bass amp, unsurprisingly, the, the guitars were okay, but the drums sounded uh, well, terrible to be frank. Um, around this time, uh, yeah, around the time I started doing the YouTube clips, uh, my friend Will, who plays bass, uh, lives in Melbourne. Um, we were talking about buying uh, a door, digital audio. What's door stand for? Digital audio workstation. Anyway, digital recording software, uh, and we decided upon Cubase, which came for free if you bought the Steinberg UR22C recording pack, which also came with a, your audio interface, your software, and uh, headsets to, to, for, for monitoring. So that was all good. And it, it, it quickly, I, I quickly worked out after that that you can record the trio directly into Cubase, and it sounds really good. I mean, the, the drums, well, they sound, um, you know, I don't want to say like lifelike, but pretty close, actually, <laughs> pretty close. So, uh, uh, so that that was a, a good step forward using doing your song arrangement in the trio, because uh, it it does have the advantage of being able to do a, a complete song really quick. I mean, within within twenty minutes, I'll, I'll I'll do a song arrangement on on the trio. You know, do the five song parts, let it come up with the bass and drums and sequence it. I've got a complete song arrangement. 20, 25 minutes, it's it's very quick. I can record that directly into Cubase, so now I have a complete song, uh, including all the song parts on Cubase. One, because it, it does sound better uh, for, for the videos. But two, I can then overcome certain limitations I have in the trio in Cubase. And what am I talking about there? For instance, when I did uh, the Beatles song, uh, Don't Let Me Down, there's a, a five-fourths bar that appears twice in the song. Uh, I just did, uh, and of course the trio doesn't have five-fourths, it only has four-fourths and three-fourths. Um, so I just recorded four-fourths for that particular bar in, into the song, into the trio, into Cubase. Then I, it, within Cubase itself, I added the extra beat to create on that on those two bars to create uh, two five fourth bars, and and I think that worked out okay. Other limitations, uh, so yeah, ch changing measures for unusual time signatures, and then if I need to play around with uh, intros and outros, I'm better off doing that in Cubase than I am in the trio, which sort of always starts on the beat. And uh, oh yeah, you have you have bums and uh, <laughs> drums and bass starting always uh, on beat, uh, which is not suitable for every song. Uh, so I can use Cubase to get around that, uh, play around with outros. Uh, or indeed, uh, if there are any sort of gaps in the song where there might be two bars of uh, of not much happening, I can achieve that in, in Cubase as well. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so Cubase sounds good, overcomes the limitations of the trio. I then thought, uh, so not only is the trio good for giving me a, a rhythm section, bass and drums, for which I can play guitar over, or if I'm playing with other guitarists, we have a rhythm, rhythm section to back us up, and you know, good for creating backing tracks. It's also good for creating what I call a guide track. Now, what do I mean by a guide track? A, a guide track is a partially completed song that can guide musicians through a recording session. Uh, and, and that's how I record with Will. Uh, I prepare the guide track on the trio, i.e. drums, bass and a, a basic rhythm guitar. 
it's got the complete song to the second, to the beat in Cubase. I can give that WAV file to Will via Dropbox or, or even probably at that stage it's still small enough to send by email. He does his bass part and, and puts that back into Dropbox for me to pick up and I put it into Cubase, the, the, just his bass WAV file, and it, it, it lines up exactly every time. I, I, I never have an issue with it. So, so the Trio is good for creating guide tracks, and, and we also recently used the guide track to do the weights, where I had lots of friends involved with doing vocals, keyboards, extra guitars. Uh, all that was achieved by them having access to the same guide track. So everyone's playing to the same uh, foundation music, uh, which you know is, is measured out to to the beat. They do their bits, and they all line up perfectly when I I get them back. So yeah, backing tracks and guide tracks, uh, two good uses that, that I have for for the trio. Now, where does a test cam come into it? Um, firstly, let me explain what the test cam is for those who who don't know. Uh, Will gave me this, so which was good of him. He, he had one, and uh, he, he came across uh, an extra one uh, via uh, someone he knew who wasn't using it, and he sent it to me at a time when uh, I was learning lots of songs for uh, a couple of bands I was in. That in the end, I didn't need to pursue those any further, um, so I, I didn't need to use this anymore. But but what what it is is uh, you can dump a, a heap of songs on it, like actual songs, in MP3, as MP3s, and uh, you can put a he your headsets into it, and then you play your guitar over those songs um, for, your, for your practice, you know, to learn, you know, if you're learning a song list of 30 songs, you just go over and bang, bang, over and over and over, and you, you're not making a lot of sound if you're in a house with other people, as I am, uh, it, it's good for that. Uh, also, you're, you're able to change keys and um, and uh, tempos uh, to suit to suit yourself. Uh, uh, slow the song down, uh, speed it up. Uh, uh, invariably, you are playing a different key to the original song, so you you can play around with the the, the, the keys, uh, which also messes with the the, the, the speed of the song. Um, but anyway, it, it's good for just having a quiet tool to, to go over lots and lots of songs at once. So th th that, that's what I found it was good for. But at some point it occurred to me, what if I were to dump all the backing tracks I'm creating onto here and, and use the Tascam uh, to provide our rhythm section for when I'm playing with other guitarists. Uh, why is that advantageous over just using the trio? Well, there are a couple of good reasons why I might want to do that. The uh, oh, the trio utilises what they call a micro card. It's in there. It's tiny. <laughs> it's very hard to get out. Um, and uh, it only you can only save twelve songs on it, so that that's a severe limitation. Uh, I, I'm well and truly beyond twelve songs, uh, just in this very short space of time, doing these uh, YouTube clips. Um, whereas the the Tascam, I mean, I don't know what its limit is, uh, but it's certainly at least double double the trio. Uh, most probably triple the trio. I've probably measured at. I've had set lists of thirty songs on here uh, previously. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's at least triple, may even be quadruple. So once you're up to forty songs, that that stacks. So I, I can get much more onto the task cam than I can get onto the trio. I, I don't want to really muck around with taking uh, their little micro cards in and out. Uh, it's, it's just too hard for my my fat fingers uh, so the task cam's good for that also it has a, a better display so w with the, the, the trio you you 
you need to record what your 12 songs are somewhere else to know. There's no digital display. Uh, so you sort of have a knob to go through your 12 songs, but you need to know what they are in advance. This has a digital display. You can even create folders, so it, can, it displays what folder it is. Uh, you know, you might have different folders for different set lists, so you can move between folders quite, quite easily. Uh, little digital display there. It, it displays the song, um, and, and you can flick through the songs uh, quite easily as well. So that, that's an advantage. Also, uh, as it happens, um, it takes a, an eighth inch, the eighth inch of the, the narrow pins, and on the Ampeg bass amp, uh, I have a auxiliary jack that's an eighth inch, takes an eighth inch pin. So if by chance I'm using the Ampeg bass amp, if one of my friends is say plugging in their electroacoustic in the in the main jack, I've got the auxiliary plug I can use uh, for the Tascam. And as I've discovered, it, it sounds pretty good. It sounds surprisingly good. Uh, the, the, just the the track the the guide track straight out of the, the trio that I've recorded through Cubase and then I've dumped onto here replayed through the Ampeg bass amp it, it sounds pretty good in fact it sounds I don't know how or why but it sounds this sounds better than the trio going into the the, the bass amp jack uh, using the quarter inch pin uh, yes yeah, so that, that's a bit of a mystery I'm not too sure why that is and presumably the, the auxiliary Jack just can take MP3s, or is designed to take that. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, it has that advantage. Um, so yeah, that's how I use the Trio, Cubase, and the the, the Tascam. Uh, the, the last thing worth mentioning is uh, as I collect all these uh, guide tracks or recordings, they're on my. I'm pointing to my PC by the way. <laughs> it's here in front of me. Um, they're all on my PC. They they can stay there forever. Unlimited, basically unlimited uh, uh, data that I can record on there uh, we, th these days. Um, so any time I want to, fragment say, get a backing track onto the Tascam, it's just a matter of opening up that Cubase project. I mute the tracks I don't want, and I would just probably be focusing on the, 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 the trio track when I recorded the trio directly in and I might add an, there might be an extra rhythm guitar track there I might use if I think it's handy um, uh, or if it, if there's if it has a good intro uh, or, or whatever I, I can keep that track live and and then that becomes uh, our, our rhythm section in, in playing played straight out of the Tascam it's very easy for me to dump the data out of the PC into the Tascam. So that's how I use the, these three products. Yeah, hope, uh, hope you found that interesting. Okay, thanks for listening.